Okay, so we should be live. I'm just going to double check real quick on my page. Um, if you guys are hopping on, just give us one second. I'm going to introduce Brian here. Um, let's see here. Okay, we're good to go. So um, I'm Angela with Hot Mess Consulting. If you're on here, you probably know me already. Um, we do branding and websites for specifically Shopify store owners. They sell a variety of different sorts of products. Um, Brian here, I actually met through being on the blocks. If you guys follow me closely enough, you've probably heard about that too. It's a super cool reality show for entrepreneurs. Um, and beyond the reality show aspect of it, which we are on Amazon, um, it's just been a really, really cool community. Like I'm so glad that I met Brian and actually Brian and I have had several, um, strategy calls together over the last month. Just like sometimes you really need somebody to back and forth with and somebody who's been where you've been before or can see something that's a blind spot. So like, I've really appreciated his help. Um, so this guy is great. Definitely recommend following him. Um, and like me, he often drops just like super helpful tips on his profile. So definitely follow him. But, um, his business is all about PR and publicity. So his business is called clear cut PR. And, um, I'm going to let him just introduce a little bit about his company and then we'll dive into the stuff we want to share today. Yeah, thanks, Angela, and thanks for inviting me on to do this as well. So, uh, so yeah, so I am the founder and lead publicist of uh, ClearCut PR, and we're on a mission to get brilliant, hardworking entrepreneurs the publicity they deserve. Um, and I'll jump into that in a little bit, but I did want to uh, kind of answer one of your comments about the uh, about the blocks too. And I, I love what you said, how it's you know it's it's this thing, it's this show, but it, but it's also a community afterwards too, and and it, it's like the gift that keeps on giving and. Um, I love the atmosphere that they have on there, especially with the mentors and the judges that they specifically put mentors and judges um, in with contestants that are a little bit further along. You're not putting some billionaire uh, uh, founder alongside of somebody that is pre rev or something like that, too. And because of that, it's it's a lot more meaningful and um, real for the uh, for the contestants and, and everybody involved, too. And it's this, uh, this give and take uh, environment of, you know, um, learning and, and teaching as well. Yeah. Um, Yes. So when it comes to PR, we specifically service entrepreneurs, uh, startups, founders, and small and medium sized businesses, typically anywhere that uh, that's uh, pre rev all the way up to about up to about two, uh, two million reason being is we have a very specific nerdy type of PR that we do, um, which is meant for you to get results. It's really meant for you to get your uh, to help you lubricate uh, the, the funnel of getting your, your, your first hundred clients. And, and we specifically focus on that. Um, and one thing I want to do right off the bat, just because it's kind of in the media right now, is uh, I'm just going to come out and say it. We're going to, uh, and I hope you don't have any kids watching, we're going to shoot Santa Claus right in the fucking face right now. And, and we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna kill the, the thought out there that PR is free. You PR is not free. You have to pay for it in one form or another, whether it be something that you do or paying a publicist to do it. There's this idea out there that people go about their business and they they might get PR or like a, a journalist might come up to them and want to do them a story. And, and that will happen. But in, in my industry, we call that and the reason why I said uh, Santa Claus, we call that a Christmas miracle. Um, and the way I the way I tell people is like, look, if you're a parent with a child and it's uh, Dece December 15th, um, are you going to wait for a Christmas miracle to put presents under the tree or are you going to go buy those presents and put them under there? And again, I hope there's no kids watching because I don't want to use this, but to bring that thing full circle around. You better be that that one that's buying the gifts to put them under the tree, and and it's, it works the same way with PR. You really need to take active steps to do it. You're either paying with your money or you're paying with your time, one way or another. You need to do something to intervene to get yourself the PR, though. Yeah, well, in my post introducing this, like I had mentioned, you know, Taylor Swift, and I think it's easy to think like that. That just that PR just, I don't know, comes with like everything she's done. Which first of all, she's done so much work to get to where she is. So is some of that from that sure but that doesn't mean that she doesn't have like a team behind her that is deliberately you know working on certain aspects of her brand in order to be like that in everybody's face i mean even the thing with stanley cups was something you know really real in, in the e-commerce industry and it's the same thing like are there things that just happen and go viral sure but like you said that's the that's the christmas miracle versus like these businesses also had to do a lot of work behind that to get to that point. Um, yeah. 
yeah. <laughs> So I love what I you said. And I, I love the two examples you brought up and, and I'll, I'll go into Taylor Swift and I'll go into, um, the, you know, the Stanley drinking cup as well. You know, a lot of the first conversations I have with people is I want to be on Forbes and I'm like, cool, that's a good goal. Um, but that's also like saying, Hey, I want to start lifting weights and I want to walk into the gym and I want to put up 500 pounds on the bench press, uh, right away. Taylor Swift can do that and she can get into whatever magazine she wants because she's been around for, for years and ages now and she's put in all the hard work and she's made herself a newsworthy story because of it. And she can walk into the gym right now and she could put up 500 pounds because she's consistently come to the gym uh, day after day over a span of years. If you're, if you're a new business who doesn't really have PR yet, we have to, we have to work out your PR muscle and we have to get you into these alternative publications, which is, which is the way that we go about it. But as we go about it, we make sure that those alternative publications, the purpose of them isn't to just eventually get you on the Forbes. The purpose of those alternative publications is to do thing, nerdy things too, like get you backlinks for your, uh, for your website as we're getting these alternative publications. So they're not just there in vain for one purpose. Uh, the, the Stanley, uh, the Stanley, um, Example that you gave too. I love what they did. So we we labeled this. We call this borrowing credibility. So Stanley's been around since 1913. A lot of people have read the story, but when they borrowed credibility from Starbucks and Target and the things that they did over there, all of a sudden they became a popular trending brand. And we face down uh, with our clients much of the same. We ask them to borrow credibility from for some of the publications that we use. Now you know we're no slouch in the beginning. We'll get you some alternative publications, but then we'll work with names like Disrupt Magazine and places like that. This is you borrowing credibility. And if you do anything publicly to borrow credibility, if there's some sort of collaboration that you're doing with a celebrity or something like that, yes, you should do that. But you should also get it publicized as well. This way you can amplify that uh, that credibility that you're borrowing. Yeah. And like one of our clients, um, imaginary authors, oh my gosh, uh, he just sells super imaginative like perfumes. And but it's really the story behind the brand. And like he, um, He'll, he'll, you, I don't know his person, his actual PR strategy. I don't work on that with him at all, but like, it's always like as seen in. And, you know, the thing is like with what you're saying, it's like, you have to think of it as a ladder, like a stepping stones, you know, like you can't, like you said, just jump to jump to like something that's going to blow you up. Like overnight, mm -hmm. it's a process to get there. And, and it requires intention. And like you, this, you actually making this a priority in your business. Um, I mean, there's obviously tons of different marketing strategies today. That's what we're talking about PR. But if you want to, if you want it to work for you, you have to put the work and time in there too. So, yeah. And to be, uh, and to be clear, I, I tell people this all the time, PR itself isn't a marketing strategy. It's something that will lubricate your marketing strategy. It's something that'll take your marketing funnel and it'll help drive people all, all the way down. It'll help it out, but it can't stand alone as itself. If you have, I tell people all the time, there's a checklist. And I actually think uh, a while ago, you, you did, you did the, uh, the checklist that I had. And it talks a lot about your brand. It talks a lot about the branding on your website, the branding on your social media. Does it all speak the same? Because if you have good PR and a bad website or a bad social media, all we're going to do is draw attention to a really bad funnel. And it's, and it's not going to work. Um, so, you know, using that example is critical. Another example you mentioned is, is it's a stepping stone as such us, us focused where we're at for early stage entrepreneurs that are doing under 2 million a year. Um, we need to be economical for their brand as well, too. A typical PR firm will start you out on a four or $5,000 retainer. And we're a lot more economical than that because the whole idea is as you're bootstrapping and you need to take these stepping stones, your budget needs to be able to, uh, to, to, to be fitting to your PR strategy as well, too. So we have, I mean, we have all kinds of plans. We're launching a plan soon that's actually going to be under $1,000 in order to just like enter entry level PR. And then, uh, you know, all, all the way up to about $2,500, which is our most expensive plan. And then uh, TV stuff, which gets up into the range of 7000 7500 But the idea is, too, that we can be the stepping stone probably up until that TV point. And then, uh, and then you, you are either at the point where you can graduate to a... Um, a larger PR firm, or you're at the point where your PR, we've, we've done such a good job that your PR is getting other PR and more PR. And we've done our job well enough to, to be able to do that and put you in the position for that as well. So I know that we um, have already kind of started talking about this and it's kind of going back a little bit, but for basically, let's just start at the beginning too. Like what exactly is public relations? What is it not? You know, um, is that the same thing as publicity? Are these different terms? Like what exactly is it and why is it needed in a business? 
Sure. So public relations is a gigantic umbrella, just like marketing is a gigantic umbrella. And under public relations, there's multiple things. There's things that you're doing uh, on page on your website. There's things that you're doing on your social media. But where we focus specifically is publicity. And we specifically focus on online publications and, uh, and, and TV appearances. Um, that's where, uh, that's where we differ from, from other people. Cause a, a lot of PR, a lot of PR firms, what they'll do is they'll help you shape a message and they'll help you shape the branding. And this is where we rely on, on, on people like, uh, like hot mess consulting, because you're out there doing the, uh, the branding and you're helping people shape their message. Uh, we're pretty much a tool that you hire and, and we're, we're the tool that's going to get you the publicity on online publications and TV as well. Um, we can we can, we're not going to be the person that's going to help you shape your message. Uh, that is where we draw our line in the sand and we know where, where our niche is and that'll be other, other PR firms as well. But what they, what they do is if they're, if they're somebody who focuses on you shaping your message, they're not somebody who guarantees you publicity. Whereas we do, we'll go out there and guarantee you publicity. They'll focus more on creating the message and then pitching that message to uh, publications. And you usually come to us when you have that message clear as day and you want to then you've you've already defined your brand with your with your on page uh, if you have a website that was created by somebody like hot mess consulting and then you have your branding defined with your social media and you now want to define your brand with your off page strategy like online publications and tv appearances and stuff like that too so uh pr really really is the idea of you um telling your story which is individual to you and we niche down and we focus specifically on telling that story uh off page Love that. Love that. And I often say this about paid Facebook advertising too, which obviously totally different, um, realm, but that, um, you know, this is for amplification of something that's already working and already amazing and already, you know, a story that people are, can already buy into. Um, but it's like am amplification of that, you know, along with the other things, like you said, like the SEO for backlinks and some other stuff we'll get into. So, um, I feel like you you kind of already went over what makes your company different too. I don't know if there's anything else you want to share around that. Um, like if somebody was thinking of working on their PR, like, you know, other than what you've already shared, but like, is there anything else that you'd want to point out? Like why clear cut? Yeah. So as you've experienced a little bit as well too. So, you know, where I've niched down into, into uh, the publicity form of, of PR, but also um, I've spent years uh, kind of perfecting uh, entrepreneurship. I also have three exits under my belt for, for seven figures each for, co for companies that I've started up and then exited for seven figures. So a lot of times as, um, as, these, as, as our clients are going through their PR journey, they also see other things that are, that are happening inside, um, inside of their company where they need a little bit of coaching and, and a little bit of help. And we're, we're really there for that too. And, and yes, we'll do the PR thing and yes, we'll get you the publicity, but I always budget time and I make myself available for uh, for, for our clients to make their funnel a little bit better because our PR strategy can only be effective if their funnel is effective and if they're budgeting and uh, uh, allocating resources in the proper way. And sometimes we need to dissect that a little bit with uh, with entrepreneurs as well, which is why we really focus on that entrepreneur that's either pre-rev up to 2 million because sometimes they need to uh, build, measure, and learn that that funnel a little better. And we will, we will deep dive into that funnel with them. We'll take a look at it and then we'll make sure that the PR um, is, is leading to a, uh, a meaningful funnel that that gets results as well yeah no i mean i can personally testify to the fact that you go above and beyond and you really leave it all on the table um i think we're really similar in that way that we really want the best for our clients you know and we really want to dig in and understand their business and like help make sure that they're they're doing all that they can to make sure that what we're helping them with they are able to succeed with so um yeah. So if any of you guys are thinking about it again, even if you just follow him for his words of wisdom, I absolutely recommend it. Like I said. Um, so can you walk us through your process, uh, for developing a PR strategy with a client, like whatever you're willing to share there. And I'm just curious how this would be different for like an online only retailer versus a brick and mortar. Yeah. So to start where we pick up is where somebody else usually leaves off. But like, like we said before, I'm not the person that's going to help you develop your, your branding and, and your messaging that should already be done. And um, we, we work with some of the best branding experts for that. So if your if your brand guide has already been created, if your website has already been created and your social media has already been created, that's the time to start, uh, start working with us. 
So as such, the first the first thing that we do is we, we take a massive info dump of all of that, everything. I want to know your brand guide. I want to know your messaging. I want to know your ideal client. I want to know where you draw your line in the sand. I want to know the client that you're trying to polarize because this is all going to be part of the story that we try and pitch. After we get all of this, and this is kind of, it's a, it's a quick but long process. Like it's a lot of times it's a long process for for you the client to gather up all this information. But once it, once you give it to us, we make it nice and concise, and uh, we we put together um, almost almost a resume. It's it's what I like to call it's a one page, and this this is how we're going out and we're pitching your brand to publications. We're using this one page and. Much like if uh, if you've ever had a corporate job and you've ever ha- needed to build a resume, you'll build different resumes, one for different uh, cultures of different companies that you're applying to. We build different one pages for the different kind of culture and the different kind of publication that, that we're pitching you to. And because we understand these publications and we have these relationships, we know the things that they want to hear. So we'll build this one page and we'll just, we'll usually spend, uh, because we, we work in cohorts, we'll usually spend the first two weeks of the month, month pitching these publications with your one page, getting the conversation started, and eventually getting that publication to commit to uh, an article on, on your brand by the end of the month. Once they do that, and once they actually co- uh, commit, we, we alert the client and we let them know that the next two weeks uh, we're working on is basically just going to be hounding this publication to make sure that you know we get their questions answered on, on uh, what type of article that they want to write. So you, the client, have to answer those questions. And we just uh, it, it just becomes a matter of hitting a deadline, which is usually we want that article published by the end of the month. Sometimes we go one or one or two days uh, over or something like that. But uh, by, by the end of the month, and our guarantee is that Whatever plan you're on, we always guarantee X amount of articles for that plan, and we guarantee that by the end of the month, those uh, those articles will be committed, and uh, you should you should have them published, if not by the end of the month, within a couple of days uh, after that as well. And we don't do that bullshit guarantee where we're like we're going to keep on working on it until uh, until it gets right. If we don't get those commitments, we give you your money back, and that's it. We usually send you off with a parting gift, and we'll we'll still get 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 you an article on the way. I don't. I don't really like this uh, this new age guarantee of that you know we'll continue to work on it until we get it right. Like if we didn't get you what we promised you, here's here's your money back. We failed. I'm sorry. Here's a part of gift. Here's another article on the way. Yeah, yeah. So one of the things is when we step back and think in terms of the goals of these sorts of businesses of doing this. Um, if you could speak a little bit to that. So again, like the the online retailer versus the storefront owner. Like for the online retailer, what is it that they should be wanting to get out of this yeah. because I think it's easy for them to expect more than like what they should be getting, but also for them to miss the mark on like why this is a good thing for them to do. And then same with like the storefront. So believe it or not, there's actually more common denominators than there is differences between the two. Um, the, uh, the And I'll start with the brick and mortar. The biggest mistake that the brick and mortar makes usually when they're looking at PR is they're like, I only specifically want PR that's local to my store. So if I have a store in Pennsylvania, I only want these uh, Pennsylvania pub- publications. And it kind of couldn't be further from the truth because we're, we're, we're attacking this in more of a nerdy SEO way. The, the whole idea is that we want them to find your publications when they're, when they're, when they're doing their research on your company. They're, they're, in, uh, they're in a state where they're figuring out if they should either walk in your brick and mortar location or actually hit the purchase button on your online publication. So we work a lot with national publications because they're going to pull credibility in one, one way or another. And whether they find, if, if you're a Pennsylvania uh, uh, company, a brick and mortar, an, an article on like New York Weekly is going to is gonna pull in the same kind of credibility as your local one would too because these publications are not destinations uh, for people. They're not going to the publication looking for an article on you. They're looking for your company. And when they search for your company, they find the publication. So there's a, there's a, lot, there's a lot of similarities, more similarities than there are differences. As far as the differences go, it's really in the messaging. When we're talking about online, we're, we're talking about how you differentiate from everything online. How your how your process and your customer success process differentiates from from other online uh, retailers. When we're talking about your brick and mortar, we're talking about the feeling that you're going to get when you walk inside of this brick and mortar, and we're painting that picture. So it's not so much in the approach, but more so the messaging and the copy that's going to be used in these publications. Love that, love that. That makes a lot of sense. Um, so how would you handle a situation where a customer leaves a negative review online about one of your clients? They fucking bury it with articles. So <laughs> this is this is this is one of unfortunately this is one of the most expensive uh, uh, forms of, of of PR or publicity, if you will. It's um, reputation management, we call it, and 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 the whole idea is that 
right now AI is so big in, in, in the PR world where you can go to you can go to GPT or you can go to Google with Gemini and you can you can type in uh, tell me a little bit about hot, hot mess consulting. And what it's going to do is it's going to take an, take an aggregate of everything that the internet says. So it's going to use a little bit of your website. It's going to use a little bit of your socials. And then it's going to use a little bit of third-party stuff, such as reviews and other, other articles and things like that. So if somebody has left, left you a negative review, we don't want um, uh, Google or any kind of AI aggregating that messaging in when somebody asks that question. And it takes about anywhere from about 20 to 30 articles to, uh, to bury that review and have Google see the good things that, that we created with that article rather than the review. So um, there is no such thing as removing it. Uh, unfortunately, that's, that's black hat, that's illegal. We don't touch that and uh, we, we would be banned from doing business and, and any kind of SEO rankings if we ever did anything like that. So what we do is we, we bury it and burying it requires getting about 20 to 30 articles um, that, that, that are bringing out a positive message about your brand to bury that negative message. So on my post, I had said like my top few reasons, like why I think people should be doing, you know, this, this sort of PR work. And it was the SEO, um, the reputation management and what else did I say? I said one other thing I know. Um, is there anything else? Like, like, what are your favorite reasons? Like other than maybe, I know you already probably mentioned them, but in a nutshell, um, my favorite reason is, uh, is, is, uh, SEO and, you know, we call, we call it SEO hijacking, which is basically if you go to an seo agency um a lot of times they'll do your on-page strategy and they'll use your keywords and to get really nerdy you know there's three there's let me back up uh let me try not to have presenters dilemma here with uh with nerdy stuff so there's three ways to get good oh yeah <laughs> There's three good ways to get SEO, search engine optimization, in order for, for your page to be found on Google. So it's uh, um, content on your website using using the right keywords. It's um, social uh, social signals, and then it's uh, off, off page credibility. So using the right keywords when people are looking for you inside of your uh, your alt tags, how you how you name your uh, your image files on your website, the content you use on your website, like blogs and things like that, and using those keywords and URLs, that, that's your content version. The uh, the social signals are you know are people leaving reviews about uh, about you on Google or Trustpilot or something like that and also do do you have a big following on 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 Instagram or Facebook that is now also pointing to your website and then the uh, the off page uh, uh, part uh, comes in with where are your backlinks um, and when it when it comes to backlinks. Uh, an SEO company, if the, depending how they're doing it, there's there's a lot of different ways I can tackle this, and I don't want to reach into where. There, we can go really deep into this. It depends on really how how far you want. There, there's these people out there called 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 white knights when it comes to SEO, and and they're like they're like we don't believe in backlinks that anywhere else, and it's it's a whole different conversation. I actually don't even want to go. That's way too nerdy. But when it comes to backlinks and you getting another website to put a link to your website on it or a non reciprocal backlink. Um, Publications and publicity is kind of off limits to, to, to SEO. You can't buy a backlink over there. The only reason we can get you the backlink is because we have the uh, the the relationships with the publications, and when they write about you, they're going to put a link to your website on there. So as such, it's very organic. It's uh you know Google gives it a very a very high authority as such, and it it will get you that backlink. So those first few months of getting that SEO backlink and, and you know, whereas if you built a great website and as, as I'm sure you're optimizing your clients' websites with all the on-page strategy, um, that will cover about 66% of the SEO. There's also the off-page strategy, which, which includes uh, backlinks. And that's where we get you the, uh, the backlinks on these publications and, and, and these articles that SEO companies, uh, you can't buy them because you can't go to a publication and say, yes, I'll pay you X amount of dollars for a backlink. Uh, they're only putting them on there because they're granting us the permission to, or, or they're, they're taking on the, uh, the, the article in and of itself as, as informational. And we're also getting the, the link put on there as well too. So we, we work a little bit with white label with SEO agencies and, play, uh, and places like that. But that's my favorite part is actually seeing the, the SEO results that we get for people through the, uh, through the backlinks, because that's going to be the, the quickest way to actually get you results with, uh, with PR uh, to the point where you get dollars uh, in, ex in exchange for your PR efforts. Yeah. Um, so we had a question too. Would you please expand on synchronizing the social media with the website to match the branding? Which I could speak to that too, but if you want to, <laughs> I want I want you to lead it off because I'm going to get really nerdy about it. Oh so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna um, that. I mean, this is really with any marketing. Like 
first of all, you have to, your, what, what you're sharing with the world on social media has to match when they click that link and actually land on your site, that experience has to match. Otherwise it feels a bit like bait and switch. Um, and you know what they were attracted to in your marketing now all of a sudden isn't actually what they're coming to. So they're not going to either trust you or they're just not interested. You're attracting the wrong people. So it all has to align, but you know, to take it a step further with, if you're using paid ads or, you know, PR strategy, um, again, like why would you put all of that time and effort when your stuff isn't really attracting anybody on its own? Like, and this is why it's all about that amplification rather than like you need to have your own traction going. And this is no matter what strategy you're thinking of using for your business, other than organic, just rolling up your sleeves and getting in there and, you know, getting dirty with it. Like you need to have your own organic traction going and know that you have a solid brand and story in place before you can like share that with the world. Um, and that, that matters with your website too. Cause again, even your marketing could be amazing. Your branding could be great, but still if they hit your site and that experience is not there, they're not going to purchase. Yeah. I, I mean, I couldn't have said it better myself in, in, in a human way. Um, that, that, that's the perfectly, <laughs> English way that, that it would be explained from, from a nerdy branding uh, point, there's actually a term for that called uh, IMC, which is integrated marketing content, which is that your website needs to have the same feel as your social media needs to have the same feel as all of your PPC ads on, on social media as well. And there's this, uh, there's this concept of, um, that, uh, or this, uh, this analogy that, that, uh, what Wes Bergman likes to use. And he says that, you know, if, if your social media feels different than your website and to your point, if they go from your social media to your website and it's different, it's almost like they feel like they got in a, a white van that says free candy and it's now taking them to a very shady spot. So the integrated marketing uh, content, the, the whole purpose of that is that if, and this gets really tough because we talk a lot about delegation, but the, the same voice and the same branding and the same words, if, if one person was writing content on your website, that same voice needs to be expressed in your social media content. And that same voice also needs to be expressed in your PPC ads. And that same voice also needs to be told to your PR guy this way that your articles also look the same because whether they come to your page from a uh, PPC ad or your social media or your, or your article that, that just came out, it all needs to feel the same. And they need to feel like they're, that they just walked through a door in the same house and not that they walked outside of the house and into, and, and into the middle of the road. Yeah, I've heard some people use the analogy too of like, you know, having like the top of the line, I don't know, Porsche or Tesla or something, you know, but filling it with like the, uh, which could be your PR, your marketing strategies, you're like having all this flash over here, but then it's filled with like the lowest, you know, level of gas, like not the premium. Um, yeah not going to go, you know, or it's going to, it's going to break down at some stage in the process. <laughs> yeah. So for anyone that's actually looking, that has that same question, I would, I would uh, just recommend uh, Googling the, the phrase IMC or integrated marketing content and just following the best strategies uh, for that as well. Yeah. So I know that Brian and I wanted to give away a little um, publicity for one of you guys. So if you're on here, we'd love to know whether you're a storefront or brick and mortar and just leave your email too. So to enter, um, specifically leave your email so that we have a way to get a hold of you and, um, whether your storefront and brick and mortar, cause we're curious who was tuning in too. Um, and yeah, so can I, can I give some specifics on that? Yeah. So it's not just any article we're, we're going to give away, we're going to give away an article on, uh, on disrupt magazine. Um, uh, disrupt magazine is, is, is a very, uh, highly sought after uh, publication, high authority people, people know, know the name. And when we talk about borrowing credibility an article on disrupt magazine, um, if you do the right things with it, which, which we'll get into a little bit, which is kind of how, how to use your PR to amplify everything. Uh, I, I want to give, uh, I, I, I want us to give away uh, an article on disrupt magazine and then and, and we'll choose, uh, we're, we're doing this live on Thursday. I believe we said we're going to pick on Monday, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, um, so join now or we will post the replay as well. And, but yes, drop your email. Let us know a little bit about your business at the least, whether you're storefront and or brick and mortar. Um, and yeah, if you have any other, well, is there anything else before we kind of wrap up for, well, first of all, anyone on here have any more questions that you didn't ask in the comments yet? Um, that's the first thing. And then if Brian, do you have anything that I, you feel like I didn't touch on that you wanted to touch on today? 
Yeah. So one one thing that I do want to add is a lot of people get their uh, get their PR and this conversation, which I which I have with all my clients, is that as as much as we can do, um, if you don't do anything with with your PR, it's you're you'll eventually leave as as a client and and we'll we'll say that say that it's not working one of the best ways that we like to repurpose pr when we get these articles is to is, is to kind of put them into into bite-sized pieces so you know for for whoever gets this uh this disrupt magazine article uh once you get it the best thing to do is to pick out about 20 to 30 snippets that they said in there for instance you know we've had articles put out on there that they'll say something like the fastest up and coming pr agency in the uh new york new jersey area so you take that and you put it on a nice little branded post with, with with your colors, and then you put you know dash disrupt magazine. Share that share that in 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 the groups um, that that you're a part of in Facebook. Share that on your own social medias, and do this twenty or thirty times after your article publishes. So many people I see just get their article, they share it on social media, and then they never do anything else with it. In order to amplify your article and and do the best things with it, you want to let it live. Uh, for, for about 30 days for, for each article. So you get this article, you chop it up into uh, 20 to 30 uh, snack, uh, snackable pieces, you share them o- over and over, and then you know you, you link the article as well like in, in the comments, and that'll get people clicking on the article um, across, across a 30 day span for them to see you as a, uh, as a credible source. And it kind of helps uh, drive them down, down the funnel if they are somebody that's ready to buy in, inside of your, uh, your marketing funnel. Oh, I love that. I love that. And that's even if you've had a recent publication and you haven't properly promoted it on your own channels. Um, I mean, something to go back and do still now for sure. Um, actually the last question, I think you did touch on it, but I didn't know if there was anything else you wanted to say about AI and GPT and anything in the involvement of PR. (laughs) We, so we use it best for, um, when we're when we get that when we get that info dump from our uh, from our clients we use it best just to just to make a very nice one page con- a concise uh pitch um i had this conversation with somebody recently and as much as i love ai it needs to be used responsibly oh yeah uh, and very, are, intentionally, very intentionally very yeah. intentionally and it still needs like everything still needs that final human touch um and it's like it can do so many amazing things, but you really have to pick and choose because if you try to get AI to do things that you really should be doing yourself, it's just you're shooting yourself in the foot. Um, yeah. And the same way the other way around, if you're spending a lot of human time on something that really could be done with AI, it's like make sure that your time is being spent in the right places and that you're using AI in the right places. Yeah. There's so many ways that it can be used, but there's so many ways that it can also be misused. Um Kind of just like uh, just one other thing I want to touch up on, just transitioning away from that. Another tip that I get asked a lot too is when when people get their articles and they share them. One of the biggest mistakes that I see from from a nerdy SEO uh, standpoint is they'll they'll get their article on Disrupt Magazine or something like that, and then right on their website they will they will link the article on their website. Now the way the way backlinks work is they have to be non reciprocal, meaning the the website that's talking about you has to link your website. And it only works, it only gives you SEO points if you don't link it as well. It needs to be non-reciprocal, meaning that you don't link it. So what people are doing is they're getting their article, they're linking it on their website, and it basically nullifies the uh, the, the article li- linking them, which is okay if you did that, but if you did that, and if you have passed, if you have passed uh, PR and articles, and you have a link on your website, just just take the link off and leave the image on. Give it about seven days. Google will then crawl again and it'll re-index and it'll it'll pop up as a non-reciprocal backlink. And it'll still be on your website for the pre- credibility factor, which is the only reason that you want it there anyway. You don't need yeah. them to necessarily get to the article itself. You just need them to know that it's there and maybe this like a snippet. That's why you can show it with like a screenshot of maybe like the best paragraph that was in it or something like that. Yeah. Um, cause you don't actually want people, especially as an e-commerce company, you don't want people to leave your website in the first place. You want them to stay on your website and end up making a purchase. Yeah. Um, so Lindsay says, or asks, do you have recommendations for examples of what you want in a brand guide? I'm in the process of building mine. I'll definitely start on that one just because branding is what we do. Um, my company focuses on website optimization and branding from a visual perspective. We don't get as much into the voice and messaging and story. Um, obviously we have to get into some of that to even do the visuals. Um, and we can work on that more if you want to like a really full proper brand guide would be, you know, not just your logo files, but even when you're talking about the logo, it's not one single logo file. You should have several variations to use, whether it's print or digital and, you know, different use cases. Um, 
where you might need different, different for like this, this hot and this HM that we have here on the stream yard, those are not our normal logos, but it's all cohesive. So you should have several versions of your logo, obviously your color scheme, your whole like vibe, like what is the vibe itself? Like it should not just be like, if it's boring to you, like, or if you can't describe it or it doesn't look cohesive, that's how it's going to feel to other people too. And it doesn't mean like you could have a simple and minimal brand, but still do that very intentionally. So it's being really clear on the visual aspect. So what elements are used, what textures, what colors, um, all of that stuff, what kind of photography should be included, what kind of poses in the photography, all of that is part of the brand, the visual brand. And then there's also the voice and the messaging. So what are the keywords that your um, your brand would say and do. And like, what is the general attitude? Like mine is, you know, we're okay with cussing and we're a hot mess. We're like authentically messy and real and like, tell it like it is, you know, and we don't sugarcoat. Like that's all part of my brand. Um, your brand may be totally different, but it's, you still want a clear voice, like messaging guide as well. So that is in a nutshell, what you should have in your brand guide. But I don't know what you look for specifically, Brian, to make sure that your clients have enough in place. I, I look for people like you to lead them in the right direction. That's what I look for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got to be honest with you. So like, like you know, I, I turn to you for branding questions. I turn to some other people for branding questions, uh, you know, and, and, and they know who they are. And, you know, we had before we ever went out and before we built a website and before we did uh, our social media, we had a 30 page brand guide. And, and you know, our, our branding person touched up on exactly all the things that you're talking about, making sure that, you know, what, what we like to get out there, which is, you know, we are clear cut PR. It's not it's not just a name, but we like to clearly communicate what we're going to do. We have clear guarantees. We have we you know what you're getting into before you talk about it. There's nothing vague or ambiguous or anything about uh, about what we're doing. And that literally can be seen in all of our social media posts that can be seen in all of the content we do that can be seen on our website. It can be seen on the articles that, that speak about us all because we had a great branding person in the beginning that that just interviewed me, uh, captured all of that, all the things that you do that captured all that. And now all we got to do is when we do that content, when we make updates to the web page, when we do other articles, is just stay in line with that brand guide. And then all of yeah. a sudden people people will say, wow, you're really consistent. And I'm, yeah. like, I'm just I'm just following a recipe for what my branding person uh, yeah. Know. And you need to have all that in place so that then you can start to outsource certain pieces of your business. But without all of that in place, you can hire the best website designer. You can, I mean, that's why it's like so strange to me when there are website designers that don't also work on your branding. Like they go so hand in hand to me, like, unless they work with another branding designer and that's possible too. And that's, oh, that can totally work, but it's just, yeah. this all needs to be in place so that all the experts that you work with in any capacity are working from the same, the same guidebook, you know? And okay. Yeah. So Lindsay, you said, so make sure they're happy to talk about my nipples. Okay. So I don't know exactly what you sell. Now I'm going to have to go back and look at that. Um, I, I do. I, I know. What but, she but yes. Yeah, so I think one of the key things I forgot to mention in the whole brand guide thing is like, yes, all of this needs to be put together with your ideal customer in mind. So like it, ha it should speak so hard to them that they are just like, oh my God, I fucking have to know this person verse. And, and everybody who says like, that's not for me or cringes or whatever. Good. Like they should, you, you want to turn them away. Cause you don't want, they're never going to buy your shit. So don't worry about them. You know, like, and that's the same with your articles. Like the articles should make a splash in that sense too. Like it's okay to stand out for the ways that your ideal customer is going to love because on the other side, like you have nothing to lose there. And if you don't stand out enough to the people that love you, then now you're just bland to everybody and you're not attracting them either. So um, I, I love what you said, how they have to feel like they absolutely got to talk to that person and they should feel that way when, when they're, when they're feeling your brand on whatever kind of content you're doing, they should personalize it. They should almost humanize the brand, meaning like, yes, I have to get to know this brand. It should feel like a person that you want to get to know. So, you know what I mean? While, while it isn't a person too, while it's a company behind it and there's all these resources and everything, they should feel like they are getting to know their, uh, a friend or a person that they, that, that they want to know. And, and it should feel very personal to them. Yeah. Yeah. And now we're getting deep into the branding, which, um, I could talk about all day, but, um, so, okay. Um, I think we will pretty much just wrap it up unless you have any final thoughts, Brian, but, um, obviously this will be up as a replay. You're welcome to ask questions. I'll answer if I know, or I'll pull Brian in to answer. 
Um, we'll pick somebody to win on Monday. Again, if you didn't leave your email and let us know if you're a storefront or brick and mortar, that's how you enter on this post. And we'll announce that on Monday. Um, yeah. So any final thoughts, Brian, that you want to yep. share about like, how can people follow you? <laughs> All right. So, I mean, I put most of my content out on, on my, on my, my personal Facebook, uh, Brian M. Lockery just felt, uh, how, how it is over here to the, uh, you know, that that's the best place. Um, cause I, cause I, cause I go deep on base, Facebook cause I haven't completely saturated Facebook yet. So once I do, I'll go, I'll go other places, but that's, that's where I'm at right now. One final thought I'll, I'll leave everybody with is, uh, and especially while we're talking about branding, it fits very well. I say define your brand with PR before somebody else defines it for you. All mm -hmm. the on-page strategies you're using and everything else that, that you're doing when you work with somebody like Angela is, is amazing for the on-page and you need to do that too. But you also need to define your brand with your off-page strategy. Otherwise, you're at risk of one bad review defining, uh, defining your brand for you and we don't want that to happen. Very, very, very true. Uh, nice to meet you as well, Joy, and everybody on here. Um, and yeah, if you're not personally friends with me and Brian, add us both as friends, absolutely. We both love new business owner friends and we always just want to help. So um, yeah, well, thank you to Brian for taking the time to join me and chat with my audience and you know, get some more news about PR out there. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you so much for having me and allowing me to get a little too nerdy. <laughs> no, it's perfect. And I think we balance each other out in that way. Cause definitely, yeah, the way that I, that I present things is not as nerdy, like not as technical, not that I don't dig into the analytics as well, but yeah. <laughs> you, you know it. it, I could tell, you know, the nerdy stuff, but you have, you have a better way. And I, I think that's why we work so well together. You know, the nerdy stuff, but I feel like you have a better way of presenting it. <laughs> Love that. Okay. You guys have a great, rest of your day. I know it's evening for some of you guys, but, um, and we'll see you again soon. I'm sure. <laughs>